So we're starting this segment on intensity. And the idea is going to be that we want to try to make one part of this piece of paper look brighter and the other part look duller. Now if we follow the thinking from the last couple segments, if we go and do something like this, we should be fine. But we're not. So look at that for a second. This side is bright, making this look duller. This side is dull, making this look bright. But it doesn't work. And the reason for that is we've solved the problem for intensity. We've solved the problem for value because they're both the same back here. But hue plays a role. So we have to figure out the role of hue in all this. So this is the side where we're trying to make the inside color look brighter by putting a dull color here. So what color would we put here to make a blue look, or a purple, let's say, look bluer? And that would be, uh, it would be an orange, right? If it was blue, we would say it would be an orange. So if we did a dull orange like this, we're on the right track. And then... The question is over here, and that's easy. Over here, the question is, this is bright, trying to make this look dull. So what is the hue we put here that will affect this color to make it look less blue? So if you were mixing paints and you were trying to make blue duller, what color would you mix with it? You might say orange. So what color then would we put here to make the inside color look more orange. Well, that would be blue. And it also needs to be bright. So if we took something like a nice bright blue here, you can already see we're getting a little bit of a difference. Of course, this is a blue that leans towards green, not a blue that leans towards purple, so it's not the same hue. But you can start to see where this one's brightening up, this one's dulling down. But I want to go in a slightly different direction, because another thing I want to do is try and get all three of these values to be the same. So I'm going to go with a dull orange here, and a bright blue here. And you can see now, these, all three of these are much closer in value. But what's going on is this blue is making this more orange, which in turn makes it duller. And then this orange is dull, making this look bluer and brighter. So we have the value problem solved, we have the intensity problem solved, and we have the hue problem solved. All right, so let me show you that again a little bit quicker just to go through the thinking because we spent a lot of time in that one explaining. So if we have a red, we want to drop the intensity of the complement on one side. And we want to raise the intensity of the complement on the other. And we want these two to be the same value. And I don't know that they are, but they're, they're pretty close. But this one's really nice. You can see how, how dull this is and how bright this is. So that's the idea here. The next segment is going to be not so much about how to solve an individual problem, but how to link up all of these different dimensions of color and how to control them all at once. So that's going to be the next step. All right, so in this segment, we're going to be talking about the puzzles from the sheet 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. 7 and 8 are where we're trying to make a change to hue and value, but we're leaving intensity alone. And then 9 and 10, we're changing all three dimensions at the same time. There's a 11 and 12 that we'll talk about briefly, perhaps at the end. But right now, we're worried about uh, changing hue and value. And so, what we're going to do is 
focus on solving the problem for hue first. So if we have this green here, we need a red, right? And then at the same value, we want to set it up so that we have a warm and a cool. So this looks pretty good. We have a red making this look greener. We have a blue making this more orange. Uh, perhaps there's a couple adjustments we can make here, kind of like uh, at the same intensity and value, it kind of likes a blue that leans a little more towards green. So here you can see the hue solution is pretty solid. This side is a little bit cooler, this side's a little bit warmer, hue solution's fine. So if that's the solution for hue, what we're trying to do is keep the intensities the same, but we're trying to also change values. So if we take this color and make it darker, doesn't matter which one you make darker, but we're going to do it that way. And then if we take this color and make it lighter, we're on track. It looks even better, okay? The intensities are the same. This one's lighter, this one's darker, hue solution from the beginning. Once you get that hue solution, you just change whatever you have to change or maintain to keep the hue the way it is. Um, okay, so, so that's that. Now, let's pretend that we're back at the hue solution. And now it's not 7 and 8, it's 9 and 10. So we're trying to change all three dimensions at the same time. So we have hue. Now we have value, right? Because one's lighter, one's darker. And now we have to go back to the intensity problem and ask ourselves which one of these two, since they're the same intensity, which one of these two do we want to make duller? And the answer in the intensity problem was you drop the intensity of the complement. So this is the complement. So we need a dull red that leans towards purple. And since this is the dark side, it also needs to be light. So if we go and do that, we are all done. No more adjustments need to be made. Okay? So when you guys go to do this, solve the problem for hue, then solve the problem for value, just make one darker, one lighter, and then if you're doing 9 and 10, you very simply take the complement and make it duller and make sure that the other side is bright. Um, that's it. Now, this is what your projects should look like when you go to mount them, all right? When you turn these in, this is what I want to see. These are, uh, this one is a really good value uh, solution. The, the, I'm sorry, it's a good hue solution. The values here could be a little bit tighter, but you can see the hue change in there. The intensity change here is a little too much, but what I want to point out is the format. That's what matters here. And then when we're talking about not, uh, 11 and 12, the problem is a little bit different. Let me turn it this way. So in 11 and 12, we have two different colors we're trying to make look the same. So that's why these are mounted both outside this relationship and inside so that the viewer can tell. Because if we just have two colors in here that look the same, uh, someone looking at it isn't really going to get it at all. So the idea here is it's a little absurd, it's actually impossible. Um, but it's, it's an exercise that's going to just help you guys clarify some of your thinking. And as you can tell by now, this whole project is, is more about engaging the way you guys think about color and filling in some of the holes in your understanding. It's more about that than it is about being 
practical um, about this stuff. Simultaneous color contrast and your developing your understanding of it is practical in that it's what happens every time you open your eyes.